warm welcome to the Dexpert webinar uh, on the topic of problem identification methodologies in utility equipment and today's focus would be on fans, blowers and AHUs and this is our 17th webinar in the series uh, for Dexpert uh, as, as webinar events and today's agenda will be as follows. We will start with the welcome note by our founder Murugeshan sir followed by a keynote presentation by Ashok sir on the topic of uh, problem identification methodologies in fans and blowers at AHUs which will be followed by Q&A session, feedback and vote of thanks. Techspert was found with a vision to organize the world's technology experts onto a single network to enable sharing of knowledge. And with this vision, Murugeshan sir founded Techspert in the year 2013. And uh, I request Murugeshan sir to give a welcome note uh, to the audience here so that we can continue with the webinar. Murugeshan sir. Good, good evening all. It's a wonderful evening today to welcome you all for this 17th edition of Techspert's Masterclass Series on Problem Identification Methodologies in Blowers and Fans. Today's presenter, Mr. Ashok Seth Raman, is a veteran in this field, and he is there in this field for more than three decades. He's a very opted person to handle this subject. Sometime back, when I was speaking to Mr. Ashok Seth Raman, about energy conservation opportunities, he mentioned that even a small modification or a correction in AHU's pulley and belt will lead to a sizable energy saving in the end. Even small problems will result in decrease in efficiency and thus wastage of energy. So I thought that this is a separate specific subject to be highlighted to our technical fraternity. Hence, we are here with this subject today. I request all of you to take note of all the practical points which is shared here and please download the same to your down the line people also. With this, I request Mr. Shravan to take over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Murugeshan, sir. So with this, I would uh, move on to the main agenda for today's webinar, and that is uh, the, the keynote presentation on the topic of problem identification methodologies in utility equipment. And a special focus today would be on fans, blowers, and air shoes. And uh, it gives me an immense pleasure to introduce our uh, key keynote presenter today, Ashok Seturaman, sir. And uh, sir is an MIT alumnus in instrument technology, and uh, he's a BE M-paneled accredited energy auditor and he's also the Vice President of Indian Association of Energy Management Professionals. He has conducted energy audits in India and abroad in around 400 plus industries. And with his vast four decades of experience in this uh, field of uh, experience in industry maintenance projects, commissioning and professional training in India and abroad. And he has also worked for a few years in abroad. In fact, he writes a lot of energy conservation articles in many national magazines like Electrical India, Cooling India, Textile Journals, Bureau of Energy Efficiency, and IAEMP websites as well. So uh, we are very privileged to have Ashok sir as our keynote presenter today. And Ashok sir, I request you to kindly uh, address the audience and uh, start the presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shravan. Uh, first of all, th my sincere thanks to Murugesan sir and uh, Shravan Gupta ji. In fact, uh, this is an uh, ideal uh, session now to go into the depth of all the utility equipments where we find like starting from compressors to blowers to transformers to pumps this is this is going to be a series of webinars where we are going to see how much of the problems identifiable methodologies that is followed in the industry and through which we can have the improvement in maintenance of the equipments utilities as well as go for the energy conservation methodologies that is there in the existing systems. To start with, uh, today we have taken a topic of fans, blowers and AHUs. All the three equipments are meant for the ventilation for the industries. And somewhere in AHUs means it is used for the air conditioning purposes. If it is on the blowers, many of the places in the industries they are using these waste collection systems. And uh, even in the waste collection systems, we find to say the breakup of consumption for a given blower, whatever we give as the input as around 100%, the efficiency or the system efficiency is only around 30%. And we get only 
30% as the output for the given 100% input. Here, in fact, uh, during my last uh, discussion on the compressors, we used to come across compressed air is taking over the compressor because the, we are applying this Pareto principle here. Like 20% of the components, it is deciding the 80% uh, uh, system's uh, energy consumption and uh, efficiencies. Like that, in the blower, if you find the typical of a, any given blower, especially we have taken into account the existing blowers in the industries, it is on the IT industry, it is on the green building, or it is on any other industry. For a, normally, the industries have, have gone for this centrifugal backward curved impeller type uh, blowers. Okay. In these blowers, let us say the assumption of efficiency is around 60% of the blower means 30% is only the output means almost 30% it is decided by the VFD motor and the bells and pulleys and the total static pascals what you are going to maintain in the system. If you see the breakup of any consumption for a given as a blower as a system, let us take a 75 kilowatt, sorry, 75 HP or a 55 kilowatt blower. It's a centrifugal backward blower. You can see the second row and the third row. What was the old existing blower and how it was modified? If you find the breakup of individual subsystem efficiency, it is the blower is consisting of VFD, motor efficiency, then the belt and bearing are the pulley efficiency and the fan efficiency and the total system efficiency. The previous one or the existing old backward flat profiled blower, impeller blower, it was having a standard motor many times rebound and VFD is there, but it is not put to full use. Loose of loose uh, V-connected belts and uh, one out pulleys and uh, the total system efficiency is was only at 48%. Though the VFD is at 98, the motor efficiency at 98, 90 and the belt and pulley efficiency is around 92. Fan efficiency is only at 60. This is where the first three columns, the VFD, motor and belt and pulley, they can try to improvise and increase the efficiency and as well the impeller also needs to be changed. If you see the second one on the last row, you find a new backward curved impeller. It's almost near to the airfoil type, airfoil impeller. You find almost from 60%, the 70% is the efficiency improvement is there on the impeller side. And the total efficiency, it is almost 63%. From 48 to 63, the 15% increase in efficiency is possible in any of the given blower systems in the industry. If you case here, if it is not only on the 55 kilowatt machine, it is on a, even on a 5 HP blower, where you find a 5 HP losses in the blower on the 5 HP blower is almost 2 HP, the heat dissipation. 60% of the motor input power only is converted to air power and 40% is exhausted as heat only. Say almost 3.7 kilowatt is going inside the motor and the motor output is almost 3.3 and the drive uh, output almost, the loss in drives, it's around 3.2 and the fan almost, after the phone, which is almost 70% efficiency, we get only 2.2 kilowatt. So ultimately the loss in fa fan itself is almost 1 kilowatt. So you find that uh, almost if you give a 3.7 kilowatt input, we get almost 2.2 kilowatt only as the air output and the heat is almost 1.5 kilowatt. This is where we can concentrate on each and every area of the subsystem of the blower. It is like concentrating on the individual subsystem and it is small drops make big version. The small drops of efficiency drop, if it is improved upon, automatically the system efficiency improves. Choosing the right size defense. See, these are all the five macro uh, dimensions where we are going to work on the energy conservation measures for the blowers. But in each of the subsystem, we find subtitled, we can say right sized fan. Many of the industries have gone for a oversized blower. They have bought a phone, 55 kilowatt um, water mains, um, blower means they are operating at 30 kilowatt. They have gone for a 5.5 kilowatt means they are operating at 2 kilowatt. See, the oversizing of blower, that itself is a loss to the system. So, rightly sized blower is first aspect. The second aspect is the blower and the system resistance. We call it as a system resistance or the static pressure on the pascal that is coming at the downstream of the blower. This is to be maintained and this has to be reduced and optimized. The system resistance has to be optimized. Third is the any blower that is burnt, it needs a curve. The fan performance curve is a mandatory auxiliary. Like if you buy a transformer, you take a certificate from the OEM. If you buy a blower, you take the certificate from the 
blow your OEM to say what is the best efficiency point or the fan performance level for the given blower. So we are trying to we can operate the blower to the best operating system, best operating point as such. Maintaining the fans regularly. This is on the mechanical side and the air side. Then controlling the fan airflow efficiently. It can be through VFD or it can be through damper or it can be through inlet guideway and control. Wherever we want to go, what is achievable and what is the losses? Any system that is introduced into a system, main system, the subsystem will have some losses. Apart from the losses, let us come out of the losses of the individual subsystem and let us see what the subsystem can deliver to the main system. Thanks to the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, this table is the first and the foremost table we all energy auditors apply in the industry. And we find whether the existing blowers in the industry is on par, is in the norms with the PE's reference table. We find uh, almost most of the industries, in eight out of 10 industries, they use only these centrifugally backward curved impeller, uh, inclined impellers. And uh, we find the ranges. You find the centrifugal fans, airfoil, almost 79 to 83%. This airfoil means backward, curved, and inclined, which is more towards the airfoil, is around 83. And what is inclined means around 79. If it is flat, or flat means, or it is in the modified radial means, it comes down to 70 to 79. If it is radial only means it's 69 to 75. And comes the last comes the forward curve. Every blower is chosen by the industry or the process expert to match to the process requirement first. As an energy auditor, we see that the efficiency of the blower is met in matching to the process. So the fans and impellers, what we know as per the BE's uh, uh, table, is around 60 to 80 percent range. But the only problem we find is a motor have a flat system uh, efficiency of almost say 50 to 90 percent if it is an IE3 motor. But if it is a blower, it is a umbrella which is a narrow curve. We find this backward curve or the radial aerofoil type. It is having a very narrow curve, the efficiency curve with respect to the flow rate. This is what we have to match the static Pascal or the static pressure or the system resistance to the system curve of the given blower to get to the best operating efficiency, the best efficiency point as such. You find that you just, when you go, go back to the industry, you just check all the your blowers, what all the blowers you have whether it is either first uh, first and foremost condition, whether it is forward or uh, backward. Okay, the specs say it, but still, what does the blower spec nameplate say? And what does the blower equipment OEM has given the specs? What does it say? Let us go through it. And in most of the industries, they go for backward curved or backward straight. Many see five out of ten, they go for backward straight. Almost four out of ten, they have gone for backward curved. See, backward code means it is used in an, in an environment of moderate dust, backward code. If it is a clean equipment, clean environment, you can go for aerofile type, airfoil type. I'll just come to it later. But uh, we are just seeing the difference in comparison, especially on the backward code, backward straight. Then comes the radial tip and the forward code. This radial tip and forward code, we have not used very much more. But this backward curve and backward straight, this is what in most of the industries it is found. And what the industry is using, you can check, check for yourself when we go for the energy audit or the industry maintenance, you check what is the condition of your employer, what is your impeller orientation of your impeller in the employer. This will decide whether you have taken the best efficient impeller in your employer system. The industry always specifies the motor efficiency in two decimal accuracy. So if somebody is saying, I'm, I'm having a 20 HP motor, I'm getting almost 92.3%, 92.35% and all, everyone talks. The industry talks about the motor efficiency more accurately. And it is a flat efficiency. Like, let us say it's from 55 to 90, it's a flat efficiency. The efficiency is flat. But the same industry, maybe it's a large industry or it's a MSME, leave alone the MSME, all the industries, they are not aware what is the blower's efficiency in band. That is, they are not aware or they are not told or they have not made themselves aware of what is the blower's efficiency, the running blower's efficiency. It is a narrow band and with that narrow band, the blower efficiency and the motor efficiency is matched and whether we are running at the collective efficiency in a better way. So the industry has to ask the blower OEMs to give the blower efficiency band or the fan curves, fan performance curve for the given blower spec. 
if it is for a 220 mm water column means what is it for 100 mm water column what is for 120 140 like that you select it for different pascals and what is the static pressures for different static pressures what is the performance of the blower that is going to deliver what is the deliverable we need to know first in fact uh, the government or the bureau of energy efficiency esl has taken up uh, innovative steps of uh, one is uh, led bulbs or led tube lights uh, replacement then comes the pumps replacement they have almost achieved 30 percent savings on existing pumps replacement from the old to new and now they have gone for this motor replacement the motor replacement can give around say 5 to 10 percent points percentage points depending on the size of the motors but uh, they can as well take up the blower replacement especially the blower impeller or the blower subsystem components as a blower as a system there is a scope for efficiency improvement in the existing blower system in all your industries i am suggesting it's almost 30 to 40 percent we can go in depth uh, where all the areas and how this can be how to get the best juice out of the blower so that we get the best performance especially on the fan core of the given blower for that the problems identifiable parameters that's what the our webinars uh, main uh, thrust is let us study each and every utility equipment what is the equipment oem has given what the equipment is delivering and what we are supposed to monitor for a given blower what is the electricity consumption if it is a three phase uh, motor the kilowatt per phase of each of the motors this one and it is summed up to know what is the input kilowatt of the given blower then the suction head in pascal and the delivery head in pascal all everything measurable by pitta tube or you can say manometer inclined tube manometer where you can see the that is there are two types of uh, approach towards the blower we call it as a fan efficiency as total efficiency of a fan or it's a static efficiency of a fan but uh, we are very much conversant or we are very much contented if we are talking about the static efficiency of fan itself that is more than enough as such see after all the static pressure plus the, dy the dynamic pressure or the velocity pressure is only going to give the total pressure let us the variable is more in the static that is what we are trying to concentrate here and the fluid temperature what is the temperature of air and what is the air density at 25 degrees or at 45 degrees one is at point one point the density is at 1.09 means one is at 1.2 that itself we get 10 percent change ultimately blower is there to have a mass movement of air where the density of the fluid or the air or the medium whatever that is the exhausted gas that also plays a part so flow if possible to measure using the anima meters with a given uh, uh, measurable length, uh, you measure it on the streamlined area, not on the turbulent area. It is a typical blower. I am just uh, giving an image. It doesn't uh, represent any brand or anything. But I just want to have you to have a look. Uh, what is the industry, industry interested in? It's a collection blower. It's a waste collection blower. The industry is interested to measure the suction pascal and the suction flow for the given blower it is not going to concentrate on the exhaust pascal or the exhaust static pressure so the exhaust if the blower is provided let us say the blower outlet at the top is having two feet by two feet as the exhaust and some industry see these are all the installation mistakes that is happening the origin of inefficiency starts at the installation point for a given blower if a given blower is having a mouth of exhaust mouth of two feet by two feet and I'm just putting a chimney of two feet by two feet and it is just narrowed down outside, automatically the back pressure is there more and almost 200 to 300 pascal is lost in the back pressure. That is of no use to the industry. The industry is looking into the positive pressure, the negative pressure that is going as the exhaust, that is of not much of use to the industry. And in fact, that is derating your blower. Instead of that, you should say, let us say it's a two feet by two feet, let us make this opening as two feet by three feet the duct and expand the duct and take it out outside such a way that the pascal that is exhaust the back pressure is not allowed to aggravate allowed to increase at the during the course of operation the back pressure to be maintained minimum so that we are using the utilizing the total full pressure all the static pressure all the velocity and the total static pressure we are making full use in the existing blower. This is our, uh, uh, thanks to, I should say, 
in each and every webinar i sincerely make a thanks to the bureau of energy efficiencies refresher guide and all the course materials towards the energy managers and auditors this gives so much of Im immense content is there in fact we don't have much of time to read when we are doing the lot of audits but this is the covid time we are able to read more and we are able to recollect more what all we have done in the audits and what all the industry can improvise in their existing maintenance schedules to improve upon their existing utility systems so we follow the cube law the cube law is very much an excellent candidate for the variable torque load as you are telling before the industry has only two types of loads one is constant torque load other one is variable torque load productive machines some more or less i uh, eight out of 10 and productive machines go for constant torque loads and this variable torque loads especially in the utilities especially in the centrifugal line centrifugal compressor pump or blower or fan okay a fan and blower the difference is only in the pascal if it is around say 1000 pascal we call it as fan the deliverable deliverable pressure if it is 2000 pascal it we call it as a blower ultimately the purpose is same the air is delivered and what it is taken the cube law is an excellent candidate the bfd for your given blower is centrifugal blower especially the backward curved blower because backward curved even if it is overloaded the power automatically comes down that is why the industry has gone for this backward type uh, centrifugal blowers and uh, the percentage of power and torque you see you can see the torque and the power is almost uh, goes together and it is variable torque working this is uh, the main application for the centrifugal torque uh, blower or the centrifugal blower where we have the scope for saving by energy optimization for the given system here i should say industry always thinks vfd is a cash cow for the given system vfd is not a cash cow vfd is going to facilitate the utility to match to the production requirements vfd can give some amount of savings we have seen in some of the textile mills they put a blower for a 5.5 kilowatt motor pneuma fill motor they say almost 50 50% saving 60% saving it is not possible ultimately the static pressure or the the static pressure end to end for a given duct it has to be maintained it may be not only for the ring frame or pneuma fill application in the textile industry it is applicable to engineering industry and process or where all the waste collection systems are there the end to end the pressure drop has to be maintained that is why the fan is selected the significant component of selecting a given fan is the end to end the pressure drop has to be maintained the pressure drop has to be minimized if the pressure is dropping when there is a end to end then the fan is mismatching to the process mismatching to the requirement if the system if your existing blower system is having a defect or a deficiency while well, there is a lot of leakage while well, there is a lot of uh, uh, suction ingress is there or where well, the impeller is uh, is a poor design poorly designed impeller we are using all the back pressure is more then vfd will not do energy conservation vfd will only worsen it or it will do the energy cutting it will derate your blower only by putting a vfd to the existing blower we think by giving 40 hertz to the vfd i have saved i have saved almost 53 percent i have saved it on paper it may be there but in the field the more and more the savings if you want to achieve you are optimizing you are compromising on the output so the compromisation on the output should not be there when you want to achieve the energy conservation so ultimately vfd has to be put to use in the production side to improve the production and in the utility side to reduce the energy consumption for the same given utility output this is where the vfds can be put to use so the energy conservation opportunities in detail for a given blower on a centrifugal backward blower fully change the blower is running at 100% capacity means a motor is running at it's a four pole motor only almost most of the motors that is supplied to the blowers if they have supplied 960 rpm it is excellent because always the heat transfer for any given application in the process is achievable at a slower speed not at a faster speed especially the heat transfer in the process applications so a 960 rpm on a blower will do a better job now the industry oems or the blower oems have started changing and they have started giving the six pole now let us say I have, they have taken a four pole motor and the pulley change you are you are derating your blower to suit your process requirement you can go for 1200 rpm at the blower end 
or you can go for 1000 rpm at the blower end to suit your pascal and flow rate for the given process and the same pulley change if it is done by pulley and belt change that is one time change if your vfd is put on the same pulley and belt then it is a, it becomes a variable pulley but vfd is not meant for variable pulley alone vfd can deliver lot more uh, uh, options are there in the vfd flexibilities are there in the vfd to make use of it then comes the dampers on the outlet of the blower then comes the inlet guide vents many people think uh, dampers is the worst way of operating a damper it is the least efficient way of operating the uh, reducing the energy on the cut derating the blower or cutting down the blower's capacity by damper means uh, you are allowing a chariot to run and you are putting a stop on the wheel it is a damper that is going to be a loss to the system for that the inlet guide vents in fact the inlet guide vents perform better for a given system from 80 to 100 percent of the capacity even this can perform better than a vfd in a 80 to 100 percent of the blower's capacity i we will go in depth so variable pitch fans these are all on the axial flow signs this webinar is more towards the blowers centrifugal blowers ahus fans and other things it doesn't touch the axial flow fans that is a topic by itself it is separate uh, concept by itself okay variable pitch fans on the axial person and the variable speed rise how and where this can be used then the multiple speed drives same vfd to operate different types of or the batch of blowers if it is in parallel operation or in series operation the multiple speed drive or the disc throttles everything comes in to throttle the blowers output to suit to the process requirement ultimately the utility is there to suit to the process requirement and you have to fine tune the utility to suit to the process a yeah, typical of a blower, the centrifugal blower, double width, double inlet blad, DWDI, you find the inlet cone has to be bigger in size. And the, you can see the double width, double inlet wheel, the two wheels on the inlet side and on the other side of the, this one. That is why you call it as a double inlet. And the exhaust area, the outlet discharge area, it has to be a bigger in size so that the air is not allowed to move out turbulently if it is coming out of the blower, but in it, it has to move smoothly. The air has to be smooth, say at the range of 3 meter per second or something. The velocity matters more to streamline the flow of air inside the, in the blower output, in the blower delivery. The plenum fans or the plug fans, this is what the HVAC equipments throughout the world, including now this is an image of carrier and the second image from Confederation of Indian Industry yesterday. The, we call it a plug fan or a plenum fan. A plug fan with the aerofoil design is a plenum fan. A plug fan with the inclined uh, backward towed, uh, this one, is a plug fan. So let us say the plenum fans are the best suited, provided the environment is cleaner and there is no dust in the system. This type of fan, they you know many of the green buildings, they have started replacing the age old centrifugal backward cowed uh, impellers to this type of plug fans the delivery is more the that is we call it is normally the concept is high volume low speed concept this came out on this came up before almost some two years back on the rooftop all these high volume low speed fans which gives a wind chilling effect and uh, it can replace more than 20 fans or 30 fans which are used as fan circulators or air circulators like that this hvls fans uh, we this uh, how this plug fan or this plenum fan is matching to the this one the, basically it is having a larger wheel spinning at a higher speed to deliver the pressure and flow compared to the tough housed fan this is a typical case study thanks to the carrier corporation the blower delivery is 25000 cfm at almost around 5 inches of water column 5 inches almost around 130 around 120 mm water column we are getting you find how does a forward curved reaction what is the airfoil fan reacts how is a belt driven plenum fan reacts what is the direct driven fan plenum fan reacts ultimately you find the belt driven plenum fan especially the fan bhp if you come to the fourth or the fifth column all the first columns are all it is related to cost it is related to the airway it is related to the total static pressure okay the, those are also important. The first cost is more important for a given system. 
but more than the first caste, the running caste only is ruling the industry now. That is ruling the industry or that is killing the industry. More the running caste, the industry is paying through their nose now, the energy caste. For that, let us go for the best in class in the first caste. If you see the fan BHP, on the forward load, see the motor is 30 kilowatt. It's a 40 HP motor. It is given for this fan, 25,000 CFM, where the motor HP is almost 40 HP only. Whereas the fan BHP, the brake horsepower, what the fan wanted from the motor, if it is a forward, it's around 33. If it is airfoil, it is 32. If it is plenum driven, well driven plenum means it is 27. And direct driven is 28. So the plenum fans has to take over, especially on all the HVAC systems, throughout the systems or any of the building sectors, definitely they need to go for this type of plenum or the plug type fans, especially to achieve a better efficiency at the starting itself. The generation efficiency has to be very much better suiting to the requirement, suiting to the environment. The environment is very clean. A yeah, blower in a HVAC system is very much cool and compact. There yeah, is a blower that is used in a boiler. It is under the sun. You find the blower is abused when it is used under the blower, near the boiler. You will find all the ID fans and FD fans are all put under the sun and the boilers, the impellers, the fans, the belts, the pulleys, everything will be gone so bad in condition because it is kept under the sun. We will come to that later. But uh, the plug and the plenum fans, they take over in the HVAC applications. Coming to the existing blower, in our blowers, first, are we monitoring the static Pascal, static pressure, all the system resistance? See, a yeah, blower's input is 55 kilowatt, but blower's output is one is flow, and the other one is static pressure. The static pressure or the system resistance is a variable and it is varying very heavily. The variation is variable band is so high that it needs to be monitored. You find uh, to optimize your blower ripping, you are retrofitting a VFD not to manually operate the VFD. Well, like uh, I am operating at 48 hertz, I am operating at 46 hertz. That is not required for the industry. You put this VFD on closed stroke control, automatic control, and it will maintain by itself. So optimization of a suction header and it is monitored. You can see the digital display of almost it's around four feet by one feet digital display, which is put in a textile mill. It is from the premier group only at the Paimoto. We have They have just displayed the what is the Pascal deliverable by the blower. And because there the flow is constant, because the machines can't take constant flow only, but the Pascal is varying due to the leakage and due to the heavy consumption in the machines, means they are able to monitor it and they are able to take control. Bureau of Energy Efficiency always says, monitor your energy to control your energy. So monitoring the Pascal has become more important. One is on the in-situ type. The other one is we have from the brand. See, this is our from Testo brand. And we can see the digital Pascal. It's costing less than 8,000 rupees only. It, it can show you at the field. Immediately, instead of using a YouTube, Masson's YouTube manometer or ordinary telelin type YouTube manometer, this is very, very much usable easily and you can measure the digital Pascal accurately. Coming to the blower, especially for the given case study, especially on the textile mill, the closed loop of the blower control is more important than the open loop type. So, you find that at the exhaust, the secondary filter, the primary filter, the transmitter, pressure transmitter is put at the primary filter, and this is going to control the blower's uh, speed. Here, what are the problems that is happening in the industry, and how this can be corrected to? So once we go for this automatic fluid uh, closed loop control, let us maintain the optimum pressure that is required from the system. Some machines require only 600, 600 pascals, let us maintain it. Thanks to the Bureau of Energy Efficiency Knowledge Transfer Platform, that is this uh, type of uh, details, it is coming to you every year thanks to the BE's bulletins. You find uh, the fan is rated for 2200 Pascal and uh, the machine is uh, wanting a, a flow rate at the rate of 600 Pascals. So you can optimize your uh, blower's uh, fan curve by putting the BFD because Blower delivery is at 2200, whereas the machine requirement is only 600. It is almost like you are running an air compressor 8 bar machine. You are running an air compressor at 8 bar. 
to deliver at the point of at point of use only at three bar. So this is a loss. This is a loss. The between the transmission to distribution loss. Why the machine is supposed to run at two thousand two hundred Pascal? It can even see you can see the uh, chart where you can find what is the negative pressure that is required by the machine is around six hundred. What is the duct loss that is also six hundred? So you mean to say the machine is wanting around six hundred Pascal means the duct itself is lasting losing around six hundred means it is a huge loss. This table, the plus and the minus of the table, if you analyze, you find you cannot have the T and D loss for a given system. It should be less than ten percent, or you can say ten to fifteen percent. It varies from machine to machine, varies from process to process, varies from utility to utility. If it is on a compressor, we say almost it is between five to ten percent. If it is blower, because always when the pascals are less, the leakage or the um, the uh, Loss in the duct will be more. Let us say it is five, uh, ten to twenty percent also, but still, six hundred pascal is the recommend, and six hundred pascal is the duct loss means it is not acceptable. So maximum you can have only is around two hundred pascals. And I am delivering the motor is operated when the filter is in the clean condition at six thousand one thousand six hundred twenty five pascal, and the same motor has to drive more. To deliver 2,100 pascal when the filters are choked, VFD comes into play for a given or typical industry. Any industry, it can be it need not be textile mill. It can be it can be used in foundries. It can be used in many of the engineering industries or in, even in paint booths. You find uh, what is the exhaust pressure or the flow to be maintained? If uh, the filters are there, you don't allow the filters to choke for a week or two weeks. You clean the filter daily. You have a minimum drop in the pascal in the filters. Instead of 1625, instead of 2100 pascal to allow the filter to choke, you can maintain the same filters at 1600. 600 pascal is going to be the gain here. This each and every industry can use this. And the what is the system resistance or the pascal drop in the existing glasses? This can be corrected. So. the leakage of suction pascal to the atmosphere this is the common or commonly occurring problem in the existing system blower system this is to be addressed first because compressed air pressure everything is audible any pressure it is blowing more than one third of the flow of the given pipe it is audible to our human ears 20 kilohertz it is able to view it is it is we are able to sense it but the blower pascal that is lost in this due to leakage and all it is not able to sense and this has to be maintained perfectly so you can even do the pressure holding test to check up the leakages and correct the leakages if it is a oversized fan go for the optimum sized impellers this also gives a better energy savings retrofit the existing fan or the blower with vfd if it is a fluctuating load condition as i was telling you before on the first slide if the filter choke is going to be there 600 pascals every week on the start of the week when the filter is clear 600 pascals you are able to gain If it is on the sixth day, six hundred pascals you are going to lose. So don't postpone your filter cleaning schedule to sixth day. Just clean it every shift and automatically bring down your filter dust delta P to less than hundred pascals, two hundred pascals. So that much of savings can be done. So online monitoring with the centralized large system and periodical measurement of small blowers will definitely say the leakage of suction pascal can be avoided. See, these are all the areas the system resistance can be improved upon. the blowers fan cow and whether we know whether we are operating at the best efficiency point see we have bought the blower from the oem and he says the system curve as calculated we can see on the right side system curve that is calculated and what is the system curve with system effect see we have calculated for 14000 cfm at 10 inches of water column static pressure but what is happening is the duct sizes have gone smaller and lot of bends and longer ducts automatically the static pressure it went up from 10 to 14 past 14 inches of water column straight away the cfm dropped to 1200 so what is the system that is calculated and what is the system f curve as per the actual this one so during the commissioning of your blower these are all the inputs that should be available when the commissioning report is done for your given blower the system curve the fan curve the 
fan curve or the static pressure where the line cuts the system curve, that is the best operating point for the given blower. This is where each and every industry is supposed to do this exercise right from day one and know whether your blowers are operating at the existing best efficiency point. Um, uh, Shravanji, shall we have a break now and uh, shall we uh, look for the questions? If you have any questions, you can definitely ask me. It is not like that uh, we have to finish the session. If you have any questions, you can ask in between also. As it is. Sure, sure, sir. I think uh, if you think uh, we can open the room for a few questions, maybe I can request members to use the raise hand option and please. ask a few questions. Please, please. For uh, Maybe if you can quickly summarize what has been discussed till now, yes. members can just uh, think about uh, questions and ask you now. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, to generally summarize, what is the monitoring parameters to be done on the existing blower in your industry and where are the scope for energy saving? We will be going in detail about the energy saving also. But if you have any questions in between, we can just answer them. That is the way we have just given a stopover. Please, if you have any questions, you can definitely ask us. Sure. Members request you to use the raise hand option or post your question on the chat group. If not, we will continue. So uh, maybe we'll wait for a couple of, uh, I think, 10 seconds and we'll proceed further, Ashok, sir. Yeah, please, please. Moving on to Mr. Raghut Taman. Uh, sir, can you kindly ask your question? Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, we have, uh, in, our, in our company, we have outdoor uh, uh, spot cooling uh, blowers, sir. Yeah. Here we have a uh, frequent choking of our filter. Okay. Within a, within one shift also, we found the filters are choked very badly. So okay. we are struggling with this problem. Uh, we are doing routine cleaning, but we are struggling with this problem. Uh, I I want to offer a solution to my company. Like we have, we can have a closed uh, instead of having a outdoor equipment outside. Okay. Can we build a room uh, like that? I was thinking. Is it correct, sir? Uh, the question of building a room is the big big job. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you can have a pre-filter, B-type okay. pre-filter, which I was discussing during the compressor session. We can okay. have a pre-type uh, B-type filter with almost, if they say, two feet by two feet. You can have the same two feet by two feet, almost double the size in the B-type, and okay. you make it daily online cleanable. And that too, every four hours it is cleaned. It can be cleaned, and you see to it that the existing main filter is not checked more choked more and your this V filter, pre-filter can be cleaned easily. And the MOC or the say, mesh size can you can select as per your uh, environment, ambient environment, you can see. Up to 10 microns, you can go up all these type of pre-filters. One is cleanable, other one is washable. And then you can make it as, uh, you, can, you, you don't need to overload the existing main filter. And you can regularly online, you can clean the existing pre-filters and still maintain the system. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So maybe I'll... Filters, that also will reduce... Ring, Hello? Okay. Sir, when we go for multiple pre-filters, our static load will increase, no? No. You see to it that the pre-filters area, A by A, V, A1, V1, A2, V2, once you are doubling the size of the area, automatically you are ma maintaining the minimum delta P across the pre-filter and you are cleaning it regularly, more frequently, online. That is better as it. Uh, you told one more thing, online washing, na? Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 is that some uh, such kind of solution available in the market, sir? Online uh, cleaning? Yeah, definitely very much available. I will, uh, in fact, during the last compressor session, I was just discussing. We can definitely, I can give in depth, or I have put an article on this, uh, how this can be done. I can definitely share to you as such. Thank you. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. I'll uh, read on a few questions which have come on the chat video as well. Uh, Mr. Devraj Kumar is asking, what is the minimum distance to be given in outlet of fan before putting a bend to avoid back pressure? Exactly, exactly. Uh, it depends upon your size of fan. On, this is on the delivery side means around minimum 3 dia and it is on the suction means minimum around 2 dia. These are all there in our Bureau of Energy booklets. But still, what the OEM says for you and how much you have maintained. One, one is this OEM has to give you the detailed uh, this one and you are supposed to have a discharge chute for the fan. We call it as a velocity recovery ring, especially in the air conditioning side, uh, outdoors they use. 
you need to have a velocity recovery ring or a discharge chute cone on the fan end on the delivery side on the suction you are supposed to have a bell mount so that the air is coming streamlined to your existing fan both can be done as such thank you thank you sir the next question is which type of fan is best uh, suited for kitchen exhaust definitely the axial flow fan is the best eh? only thing the kitchen it needs more of air changes it's a air changes has to be very much more in the kitchen so you can go for a heavy duty axial flow fans thank you so then uh, i think uh, mr uh, that was that question was asked by mr ashwini sharma the next question is uh, mr shantanu uh, chakrabarti is saying yeah. um, is setting the suction pascal with help of dampers correct or the fan speed should be reduced by pulleys exactly uh, mr shantanu i am just coming to that point only what is the loss when we do the adjustment by dampers and what is the gain where we can achieve by adjusting the speeds by vfd i will definitely come to this i will just discuss it now in the next uh, this one session please thank you thank sir you. He, he has also posted another question uh, checking of compressed air leakages is easy could you please give some practical steps for checking leakages in suction pascal yeah uh, always the suction pascal for a given blower can be checked only inferentially let us say the blower is uh, uh, kept running and uh, let us say you, this blower is uh, coming to your batch of 10 machines uh, and uh, each and every machine you just go on on and off keep it op open and close uh, you can see if the pascal drop is more for a given machine then the pascal drop in the machine or the leakage in the machine is more the blower leakage or this pascal leakage especially on the low side because it's very low pascal this is measurable only by the inferential your in situ gauge should be there the digital pascal meter should be there and you open and close you see the changes in readings the relative changes whichever it is getting more that machine is leaking more we can assume like that and you can go like that thank you thank you sir maybe we'll take one a couple of last questions yeah. uh, mr shiva shakti ben can you please uh, proceed with your question Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, as every nowadays, the uh, energy conservation measures a common goal for our organization. Yeah. Uh, generally, you now while doing doing retrofit and uh, AH choose like uh, removing of conventional fan to the EC fan. Yeah. Uh, certain AH choose one to four, one to one. Uh, we are con converting the fan based on the yeah. capacity and the CFM ratio. Certain AH yeah. choose are one fan, one conventional fan has been removed and two EC fan has been fixed. So such a concepts also in in you are involved here. Uh, you as an expertise, you tell me uh, yeah. things because design perspective, OEM saying we attain the CFM level or uh, we can reach the temperature in the ODC. Yeah. But you said another with respect to the static and lot of uh, design perspective, either the existing plenum and ducts are okay. Either what are the checkpoints we need to do as a site level? Those things I'm expecting. Sir. Exactly, exactly. I'm just going through the maintain your fan system efficiently. I will be discussing that in that point. Eh? But as okay. you said, the EC fans, the initial cost is so high. and uh, the uh, we, the uh, the main com, uh, agenda of our session is on your existing blowers what all the energy conservation measures to possible to improve the efficiency of your existing blower generation air generation from blower from 60% to say by 80% say another 20 to 30% how this can be improved upon so energy conservation measures is going to cost you very much less but the fan replacement ec fan replacement is a very costly affair and it is the initial cost is so heavy it has to come down once it comes down we can think of replacement like motor replacement or pump replacement or the impeller replacement eh? definitely this will come but at a later stage because now the cost is the main forbidding factor now as it thank you thank you sir i think uh, there's one last question by mr agarwal again and after that we'll proceed with the session sir yeah agarwal sir can you please proceed with your question suction system of a carding machine uh, okay can you just give me a rough comparison of the losses in the duct because the duct in a textile mill are 60 to 100 meter long uh, for carding and broom etc yeah and rough comparison of the drop yeah uh, the between stainless steel between yeah. stainless steel and the ordinary ducts uh, gi sheets okay uh, normally what we have seen in the ducts uh, Uh, from the machine to machine it is not much drop but from the main header to the duct end end of the duct uh, maximum 200 to 250 pascal is the drop that we have seen in many of the uh, energy the textile mills where we have done the audit uh, 
but if it is too much of loss uh, more than some 500 pascal or 600 pascal as mentioned in this b knowledge transfer platform that is not likely to happen and if it is happening means the ducts are so large and so this one in fact uh, increasing the duct size is a better option and the moc of duct you go for a frp duct or you don't need to give a stainless steel duct even a frp duct also can well the friction losses are less uh, and uh, you can go for that type and say uh, increased size of duct with less number of vents and uh, straighteners are more need to be added as such. Sure. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. I think uh, with that, uh, you can proceed with the further part of the presentation. Thank you. Please, sir. Please, please. Thank you, Shravan. Thank you, Shravan. Okay. So, now maintain your existing fan system efficiently. The periodic inspection of all components means the fan impellers. Many of the fan impellers, though it is meant for a dusty environment, if the fan impeller is gathering more and more weight, it is already around 50 kilos and around 10 kilos is added weight due to dust and heavy, uh, the process waste is getting added to this, then it is a more loss. So lesser the weight, the savings are more and the consumption also is less. One is that aspect. The motor repair or the replacement. Now, existing blowers, instead of IE1, they have gone for IE2 or IE3 motors that definitely, because IE2 motor with a VFD compatibility automatically becomes an IE3 motor. So IE3 motor for a given blower is a mandatory now because one is it is inverter compatible and any of the blower and for your information any of the variable torque load mechanisms in the plant it needs to have a VFD compatible motor only. It has to be driven by a motor. The mandatory thing will come. VFD will definitely try to facilitate your motor or the blower uh, or the compressor, centrifugal compressors, to go to the best performance point for the output. So that is very much needed. Then this belt tightening and replacement. See, uh, I will come to that uh, that point also next. Uh, but too much of tightening also, it can even even break your crankshaft of the main motor or the uh, this one, impeller. So optimum tightness and the replacement of belts from V belts to cogged belts, wrap cogged belts. That has already taken started taking place many of the industries and we find many of the innovative practices done in the belt and pulley replacement we find so much of savings is possible then this bearing lubrication not to do with ordinary multi-purpose grease especially on the pillow block and all we need a shear resistant the grease has to be polyurea thickened lithium complex grease with a shear resistance and it has a good better penetration strength this will do a better lubrication for all the water bearings as well as for the pillow blocks of the existing centrifugal blowers. So periodic inspection of all the components will give an indication and periodic maintenance of the routine overall, this will try to maintain your system, fan system efficiently. So maintenance and inspection also goes for this impeller inlet, the seal clearances. Axial fan, it is not need to be mentioned here, but I am just mentioning of a 1000 mm fan, 1200 mm fan, somebody is keeping around 50 mm as the clearance, the tip clearance. It should be less than 10 mm. See, this is like that. All the impeller inlet seal clearances are as per the design as mentioned by the OEM that is maintained. One is by the as per the norms, the other one is the OEM is giving the details. Then the corrective maintenance to be taken on all the blower. Yeah, blower is giving a batch of 10 machines. As a, uh, as a yeah, one, one uh, engineer was asking me, one member was asking me, if there is a drop or leakage in any of the machines, uh, this has to be relatively checked. Relative machine to machine monitoring by putting a fixed gauge at the incoming and each and every machine putting on and off, you know the significant pressure drop that is happening in the pressure on the head, on the main header. This will show which machine is leaking more that can be corrected. So undertaking the overing of, overhauling of fans and blowers according to the OEM's instructions. Then last but not least, especially the blowers, the centrifugal blowers, the noise levels. See, normally you could have seen as a typical industry maintenance man, what is the normal noise and what is the extra noise? See, one is the noise checking, other one is the vibration checking. The vibration checking, especially for the blowers, is mandatory now because the blowers, they get a heavy torque at this time of starting and the running torque is very much less, at, it is less than 50%. So, the vibration checking also, it is ne necessary in case of any blower mechanisms at uh, during quarterly basis as such. So, I am just going to the in inside of the blower specs. Uh, what does the blower nameplate spec say? 
the static pressure, the volume, the RBB, RPM, revolutions per minute, and its slippage. In some of the AHUs, in many of the buildings where we have done the energy audit, we found almost 20% slippage that is happening because that is a remote area, neglected area. It is not an unmanned area, I should say. Many people don't see this, the maintenance people. I don't curse, I don't uh, accuse or blame the maintenance. It is kept in a secluded area. So automatically the slippage is happening. It is not noticed. But thanks to the IoT, we can have the IoT sensors on the speed, especially on the blower speed, and we can have a monitoring of blower RPM so that we know what, what it is, uh, the transmission loss is not there. If your blower's efficiency is only 60%, these components, the static pressure and the RPM and the slippage, this almost drops around 10 to 20%. This can be corrected. We'll go in depth as such. So on the static pressure, all the system resistance, is the sum of static pressure losses in the system. This, it's a configuration of ducts, the size of ducts, the length of ducts, the pickups, elbows, and the pressure drops across the equipment. The more and more the elbows, the more and more the pickups, automatically the pressure drops are more. So these are all the areas to be concentrated, especially when you are taking the routine maintenance, just open up at the river, river end and then have a thorough cleaning. This cleaning only will improve the uh, that is the reduce the system resistance. System resistance varies as the with the square of the volume of airflow. So system resistance is more means automatically the volume air, volume of the airflow also it gets uh, uh, it is on the system resistance and volume they go together as such. So longer narrow ducts and many bends more resistance and larger ducts with few bends and the, even the MOC material of construction of the ducts also matters. When the system resistance is more, the volume automatically drops. This is what we want to see. The system resistance is maintained always, or the static pressure is maintained always. As per the norms, during the commission of, commissioning of the equipment, what it is maintained, during running after three years or five years, what it is maintained, this has to be checked regularly, routine B as such. This is a typical uh, blower spec given by a reputed manufacturers you find the existing blower at 59% and the new blower, what they have suggested is 69%. The table which I want to show you is mainly, you can find many of the parameters in the table, it is contributing factors to the blower's efficiency. The static discharge at 20 degrees, static discharge at 45 degrees. The MM of water column, you can find, it has gone from, see, static discharge at 20 is almost 275, static discharge at 45 is 250. So this is happening in that system. So the static pressure with respect to the air temperature, you can see the air density also, it is an air operated uh, blower only. You can find the air density at uh, 20 degrees, it's around 1.2, it is more dense. Eh? At 45 degrees, it is 1.09, almost 10% is the last. So ultimately, many of the contributing factors are there. So you need to know the system or the fluids uh, temperature also, and the fluids density. And the blower's efficiency is depending on many of these factors, but ultimately impulent is the main critical factor. And next comes all the system resistance and all this uh, variation in temperatures. So you revisit, re re revisit your blower nameplate today. You just check up whether your nameplate is blower nameplate is giving 60 to 70 percent efficiency as per your backward. It's a flat plate design or a curved design. You just see visually check yourself, physically, physically inspect it and see your blower is as per the OEM, what they have given and what the norms, what is the energy efficient blower is giving, what your blower is giving. The efficiency part, you can do the calculation by yourself, centrifugal backward towards efficiency, that's to the total cost. What is the fan total efficiency is that volume and total pressure or you can say the static pressure because we are going for the, not for the total efficiency, we are going for the static efficiency only. So no two fans efficiency can differ by 10% if they are taken in a similar purpose and similar environment. So you can use the formula to check your fans efficiency, static efficiency and see whether you are on norms with the industry segment. What is your, what does your lawyer in uh, the efficient blower norm says, and where is your inefficiency lies, that you can correct it as it. The airfoil blade, it is not only used in uh, HVAC systems, but is used in many of the cleaner environments in the industry. It is basically called as airfoil because a bird's feather, when it is dropped from top to bottom, 
it flows very slowly it is the least weight and it is the more aerophile dynamics you can see the wheel rot rotation and the inverse uh, this one aerophile uh, design it is the highest efficiency impeller that is to be used in the hva system just check your hva system whether you are having this type of impellers industrial systems where the environment is very dusty there the only it needs to be changed the impeller you can see the fan performance curve this is what it is needed especially when you are buying purchasing a blower or in your existing blower you try to retrieve the uh, fan performance curve from your oem basically you find a high volume at moderate pressure but it is non overloading at the higher higher loadings power characteristics power characteristics such a way that it is not overloading even when it is goes to overloading this is a centrifugal backward curve eh? you can see the system pressure or the sorry the static pressure and the mechanical efficiency all the static efficiency where it cuts it the point of cutting is the best efficiency point this is where the hp is selected and the pressure and the flow rate is selected and the efficiency of the system is known to us this is to be known for each and every curve fan curve to be operated on your existing blower on all the different pascals on all the different types of static pressure what is a deliverable flow at what uh, uh, efficiency this is supposed to be there with you as a user centrifugal backward inclined the backward inclined and aerophile the design or the inclination of the impeller direction is same only thing it can take slightly dirty systems it is a aerophile type means it is totally clean environment if it is slightly dirty it can go for inclined type and uh, definitely the efficiency is more than 80% we are talking about 60% and 70% this efficiency is more than 80% disadvantage is if it is very much dirty if the environment is dirty room very much dirty then it cannot take up then the uh, machine goes for instability as such you can see these are all the energy audit studies where we have done in the industry the first two on the left side these two impellers are all flat plate impellers it's all backward curved backward type but it is flat impellers this is having a relatively lesser efficiency by 5 to 10 percent the efficiency relative efficiency is different compared to your next you find the right side this blue color and this ash color that is a aerophile type impeller where you can find the difference is there between the centrifugal backward between a flat plate impeller and a curved impeller that to if the curved impeller is towards the aerophile type design aerophile design the curved on the flat plate impeller the efficiency is less than that of air file and the characteristics also it's following the air file blade only but if it is a air file type it will definitely go to the hvac side it can be applied but for all the industrial applications air file blade is not acceptable that is why people go for this inclined type or a, they call it as a inclined but backward type impeller for the industrial applications so the fan performance or the efficiency what we say is basically the fan efficiency means ratio of the power conveyed to the air stream and the power delivered to the by the motor to the fan depending on the fan and the impeller what is the power that is delivered at the blower shaft that is going to decide your blower's efficiency the fan performance curve at different pressures it is to be taken from your oem blower oems and buying a fan without a fan curve is buying a commodity you please don't do that if you have already purchased a fan at least retrieve, retrieve your fan curve from the oem it is a typical case study where as i was telling before 20% components of your blower system that can dictate the 80% energy consumption of the given system our uh, ramesh agarwal ji was also asking about this as such last time in fact uh, it is on a boiler id fan see i will show you the this one this is applied in a boiler system where the id fan and the fd fan are kept near the boiler flow and this is supposed to maintain a oxygen trace in the flow gas automatic flow gas system it is a closed loop control it's a cascaded control which many of the industries are using vfd on the id fan but uh, the boiler oems they are skeptical about the vfd on the fd fans because the static pressure has to be maintained on the forced to draft fan for a given boiler the static pressure has to be maintained for the boilers safety aspects but on the id fan the boiler automatic flue gas stream it definitely performs a better 
purpose by retrofitting a VFD on a, this one, boiler ID fan. Now, coming to the uh, point, uh, it is in the SM dying Karol, the energy study is done, where the belt and pulley uh, vendor or a OEM or an expert, he went there and it is replaced. We have replaced the existing, this one, the fan, uh, the pulley and belt to resize the pulley and belt. If we find a yeah, classical V belt is changed to cogged belt is one thing and the pulley size was 7 by 8 inches, 7 inches by 8 inches, the pulley, water pulley size was increased and the machine pulley size was slightly reduced compared to 200. If you find here at 12, see, as I was telling before, the blower's efficiency is decided by the blower fan's output. What is the electrical output, power output given at the blower fan shaft? And what is deliverable at the flow and the static is the output. That is the output by input. So ultimately, for when, a blow, when this blower is running before on the existing condition, it's a 18.5 kilowatt, 20 HP blower. It is the motor is running at 1478 RPM, but the blower RPM is at 1250 RPM at 50 Hertz. 1250 RPM at 50 Hertz means the blower has already, the belt and pulley has been done to derate the blower to 1250 RPM at, to operate at 50 Hertz. Here, putting uh, they have the pulley as solid, it's almost uh, five years uh, for the uh, system. It is under the sun. So the pulley has gone down. It's gone out of shape. It is dished out. So they replace the pulley and they resize the belts. By re resizing, they have gone for 180. Instead of, instead of 175, 200, they have gone for 180, 190. I'll just share these details, this uh, webinar content uh, through YouTube our, from our uh, tech experts, this one. You please go through the study and you find out this is happening in each and every industry of yours where you can see the optimizing the speed ratio of the motor and the machine. Motor and the blower is one thing. And uh, instead of operating at the blower speed at 1250 RPM, operating the blower at 45 Hertz, 10% reduction in the blower RPM, automatically give me 30% savings in the power. This is what we wanted to try if the cost is just, it is recoverable within two months. The payback is recoverable in two months. So it is very much possible in each and every industry to optimize your the motor and the blower pulley sizes and go for cogged belts because the cogged belts have a power carrying capacity, more carrying capacity. Automatically they deliver more and, and you can achieve this 30% savings. It is on the why this is done is, it is on a critical application, it is running for, for almost six months now. We have checked from the industry also. This case study is getting proven and it is getting recognized by the industry circle. That is, the boiler flue gas has to be at an optimum excess that is maintained by the VFD retrofitted on the existing blower. One is, it is able to reduce the combustion loss due to unborn fuel. It is reduced, able to reduce the heat, excess heat that is going out, that also it is able to reduce and it is able to maintain the zone of maximum efficiency of a given boiler and for the past six months we get the result. The combustion efficiency is excellent, it is in fact improved and the blower power savings are almost 30%. So this is what we are looking into the industry. 20% components should leverage to improve the total efficiency of the system, it should not undercover or it should not dilute the efficiency of the system. So first of all, first and foremost, any of the blowers that is kept under the sun, you please have the roof of the blowers on your blowers so that the blowers on the HVAC systems, it's always kept cool because it is already kept in the plenum. But all these equipment blowers or the waste collection blowers, they are all kept under the, under the sun only, especially the engineering industry and the foundry industry, you can find the blowers, the belts and the pulleys, everything gone out of shape and it has gone brittle also. A simple pulley change on a given blower, a 2 inch reduction on the motor pulley from 8 inch to 16 inch, it gave almost 60% power savings. But here the power savings is not the critical thing, it is not important. What is more important is the Pascal demanded by the process. So you decide the Pascal demanded by the process and thereby you change the motor pulley and optimize the speed ratio to get the best out of the blower. Anyway, for every five years, you have to replace your pulley. 
once the pulley looks glassy it looks like a glass finish and it is looking very glittering automatically it is a loss to the industry in productivity as well as in utility stroboscope monitoring for this rpm revolutions per minute we can go go for non contact type taco or if the machine cannot be stopped you can go for the stroboscope to measure your rpm and always any the uh, exercise done before and after belt and pulley change measure your rpm before and after to confirm whether you are the slippage is very much less it should be less than 2% whatever you are trying to do it should be less than 2% so the cogged belt and pulley is the right side uh, image this shows this is the way it should be done for the existing this one and the bell should uh, grab the pulley by the sides at not at the bottom you ensure that as such in the maintenance this is the bureau of energy efficiency is guideline table this shows up to 10 hp we lose around 5 to 8% of slippage loss in the bells especially in the v bells so go for this cogged bells or this flat bells but this cogged bells are cheaper and the power carrying capacity is more by 30% so ultimately the coefficient of friction or the grip is more important friction coefficient is more important strength of the belt is more important so this is what we can achieve and don't allow the visible losses to happen in all your employers in the industry the fan affinity loss every one of us aware what is the flow versus speed is linear and the static pressure is the square of the speed and the power is the cube of the speed this is what we wanted to achieve in any of the exercises what we are doing now especially on this energy conservation machines as uh, uh, some other member was asking me in this uh, webinar what is the purpose of going for a um, bfd and respect to discharge tamper discharge tamper the loss is the you can see the energy consumption is almost 60% but if it is a variable speed rate it is only 20% you can have a terrible savings excellent savings of power if you are going for bfd but see to it that you are maintaining the static pressure that is maintained when you are going for a bfd static pressure is getting down that you maintain your starting pressure and operate your vfd on your cutting cutout settings of higher limit and lower limit settings of vfd to maintain the static pressure within the control so the inlet guideline here you can find this graph i also will show you the variable inlet guideline it is more better than a vfd or a discharge damper especially at 80 to 100% of the capacity this is what many of the industries are making use if they have a control of their if they have a constant loading between 80 to 100% of their capacity they can as well go for the singlet guideline it is a very cost effective measure so yeah system curve is one is sc1 and the system curve is sc2 i am having a system curve where the static pressure i am maintaining and i am applying the damper on the first curve if i find from point a the point where the static pressure meets the system curve this goes to point b when i am going for a damper but uh, when i am going for a vfd the static pressure drops to c that is sc2 the static pressure drops here so you find what is the difference between the vfd and the damper damper you are able to increase the static pressure on the given system by dampering but the vfd will reduce the static pressure but when static pressure is the criteria you try to limit the usage of vfd not to go by 60% or 70% 5 to 10% of vfd also will match to your system specifications of flow and static pressure maintain that as such this is a b is guideline curve only in many of the places i found this is got changed instead of 30 to 70% i found between 60 to 80% this is working better practically see vfd is not to be used as a variable pulley alone it can be used for the total uh, with it has a lot of flexibilities and options can be used but vfd has to be used between 60 to 80% or say 90 90 maximum 90% you don't need to go to 100% but the same vfd is used between 30 to 50% the motor itself the fan getting the cooling the motor itself is getting lost and if it is a compressor the compressor also put to heavy load as such so the optimum efficiency of the system or the load has to be checked to achieve this variable that is the pfd reduction between 30 to 70 instead of that it is 60 to 80 it is the achieving better as such this is on the ahu where it is done on lecs lakshmi electrical control systems coimbatore 
it is again an energy study done with lower and where pulleys and bells have been changed and resized instead of 130 or 155 motor and machine pulley here they have swapped it the industry has taken the initiative and they swapped it from 170 to uh, instead of uh, they altered the this one motor and machine pulley while resizing and they could find uh, at uh, the normally the motor is supposed to operate or the ah is support this ah is used for a tool tool room application here also the ah cannot be run at a very lower loading because the tool room or the cnc machines this eprom machines are used there in the cnc machines that will get affected so it is a critical application here also almost 50% savings was possible in this industry it's on a 10 ton machine it, instead of operating the blower rpm at 1215 rpm 50 hertz we are able to operate the same blower rpm at 1215 rpm at 35 hertz and still the comfort level did not reduce within the premises instead of uh, operating the blower rpm at 50 hertz uh, the 50 hertz was raised the pulley was resized and it was raised to 1760 rpm here in this application and never definitely it cannot be run at 1760 because the blower's efficiency is depending on the what is the shaft kilowatt given at the blower shaft only so at 1215 rpm instead of giving at 50 hertz if it is given at 35 hertz the savings was almost around 49% from it was also recorded every day they are taking the readings previously on a 5.5 kilowatt motor they were almost 120 units and after doing this exercise it is only 61 units and still this is running for the past uh, say 6 months excellent no this and they are going to do it in other machines also and the the name plate of the blower shows 9600 ifm as the air quantity at a starting pressure of 40 mm water column the motor speed is 1440 but the blower speed is 1200 rpm already the blower is derated to operate this ah there is the motor is derated to operate this dh this uh, air handling unit blower efficiency is 60% the energy loss generation is 40% so let us look, look into the ways to improve the losses in the energy generation and we can improve say around 10 to say 20 to 30% as such here so necessary measures when installing the blowers so Whenever the blowers are installed, the dust type or the concentration or the dust laden gases, these are all the areas to decide about the impeller of the blower. The next point is the plant layout or the expansion plans that has to be checked. The routing routing of pipes and also has to be checked. The pipe, especially the ducts of the blowers, it has to be clean, straight, and with less of bends. And bends and turns are avoided in the ducts. straight lines at least up to three, three times the duct diameter this will show that the flow is streamlined and it is not turbulent system resistance can also be improved upon by changing the moc of duct going for frp ducts going for instead of a square type duct you can go for a circular duct circular duct the friction loss is less in a circular duct compared to a square type duct or a rectangular type duct everyone is aware of it that is why people have started changing in the hvac environments hvac installations it is also happening in the industry installations as well as it. so the duct sizing and the material of construction of the duct also matters more and the hence, hence the system resistance has to be checked periodically and whatever the modifications are introduced the system resistance is checked before and after to see to it that the resistance is not changed in a higher way appreciably it has to be changed only marginally less within less margin only so ultimately whatever the energy audits or the energy studies we do do in our not only on the blowers in all your utility systems first we find uh, all these years for the past 10 years this blower machine was consuming almost 20% more that was a shock to us as a to the maintenance man and today you are relieved as a maintenance man oh today i have you i am able to relieve almost uh, reduce my blower consumption by 20% and from tomorrow onwards it's a delight that you are able to reduce the consumption uh, for another say another 10 years you can run the blower with 20% reduction in consumption so the sharp relief and delay that is happening to the maintenance man and the production man or the industry management should not think uh, maintenance is a necessary evil it is in fact a tool to the productivity tool to the productivity means what the utility to process is like medicine to the body it's like a thing like a cough syrup to the our uh, this one throat 
Cough syrup, you have to shake the bottle of cough syrup and you have to slightly shake your body so that the cough syrup also acts to your body. So the utility and process has to go hand in glove and it has to go proactively fine tuned to the system. Thanks for giving this opportunity. I have taken much of your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am open to questions sir. now. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I think that was a very extensive presentation. I'm Thank sure you, this is a limited time to cover the detailed aspects of fans, blowers, AHUs and all. But uh, thanks for going into such specifics of what has been uh, possible in the industry. I think uh, with this, I will open a quick uh, a few Q&A sessions, question and answers. Uh, members request you to... Uh, uh, Shravan, Shravan yes. I have two questions received eh, from my end. Yes, no sir. problem, sir. I think you can... Uh, can you ask the question, sir? Please, sir. Yeah. See, uh, Asok sir, uh, you told me, uh, told that, uh, you know, 20% uh, slippage is there in um, uh, ASU blowers, right? Exactly, sir. So what would be the percentage of energy saving opportunity available? Uh, sir, if you arrest that, if you arrest that 20% slippage. Exactly, exactly. Uh, if if uh, normally the allowable slippage is around 2% only, if it is growing more than 10% or 20%, the productivity is getting lost. Especially in the AHO, the cooling performance is affected. Mm. So the cooling performance can be improved upon. If the cooling performance is okay, then you can reduce the size of the pulley and you can resize the pulley to achieve the 20% savings as such. Once the 20% so, straight away, 20 to 30% uh, energy saving opportunity is there, right, sir? Exactly, sir. 10% reduction in speed of the existing blower system for the given output, it will give 27% savings in the power as such. Oh, okay. And uh, what are the reasons for uh, this 20% uh, slippage, sir? How we can arrest this? Definitely, sir. It is only by monitoring, sir. It is routine monitoring of all the your. Uh, machine and the blowers uh, RPM, if it is monitored every month uh, and if it is maintained, one is monitoring and if it is difficult to monitor, you can have a sensor, speed sensor, uh, IoT type of sensors have come in market now. Uh, just put a sensor on the blower RPM and you just give it to the this one. If it is going less than that 2% or 3%, it can give alarm. So as and when the alarm comes, we can go and correct the system as such. The slippage can be corrected as such. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we would move on to the questions from the audience. Uh, kindly use the raise hand option. And moving on to Mr. Mohan Babu. Yeah. Uh, please ask your question, Mr. Mohan. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. It was a nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, what, are, what are the methods to measure the slippage, sir? Uh, you measure, you, when, the mod, when the blower is in full load condition, when it is in the loader condition, you use the non-contact tach tachometer or the stroboscope. Stroboscope means you don't need to switch off the blower. Non-contact tach means you have to put a sticker and then measure the, this one. So which you, if this is costing around 3000, that is costing around 15,000. So if you have any of these instruments, you can measure it uh, with a non-contact type, the blower RPM and the uh, machine, uh, the water RPM, and then you can decide the slippage based on the speed ratio. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mohan. Uh, then uh, I think there is one question on the chat window. Uh, they say, uh, why do we have to change the pulleys after 40,000 hours of operation? And exactly. is it only for flat pulleys? Uh, they want some clarification. Mr. Shashidhar has asked this question, sir. Uh, I agree with you, Mr. Shashidhar. It is not only for the flat pulleys. I have not mentioned it meant for flat pulleys. See, this pulley takes almost, uh, say, every six months, uh, almost 10 times we are replacing the belts on the pulleys. The belts make a dent in the pulley and it is dishing out the pulley. We call it as, it's a technical jargon. They say the pulleys get dished out. It is just getting holding out internally and becomes totally glassy in uh, this one. It is very much, uh, uh, it is so slippery that it is not able to grip the belt. So this is where the, um, um, uh, this one, um, I, uh, I have come across a 10 year old, uh, sorry, 100 year old belt company where they have given the instructions. Any pulley which is used more than 40,000 hours, this automatically loses its uh, uh, friction coefficient. So it is better to replace to improve the productivity. In some, in some cases, after replacing the pulley and the belts, uh, we are able to increase the productivity by 20%. This is also achieved as such. Thank you. 
okay sir and i think uh, george sir also has a you know view so for yeah. office environments ec fans are better from an investment perspective and the operational challenges as well so from the office environment ec fans are uh, good in terms of roi is what also george sir is saying i think so with this uh, uh, murugesh sir shall we conclude the session we have no long, no more any questions so oh, okay, okay. We, can, we can we can sure thank you sir i think ashok sir that was a fantastic thank presentation you, thank you sir i would request uh, mr das gunalan sir to give a vote of thanks so oh, thank you so much uh, shivan and murugesh sir for giving this opportunity for me to talk today thank you sir and uh, at the offset ashok sir your presentation was simply super thank you, you literally sir. touched entire nuts and bolts of entire blowers and motors i mean uh, this this can be a, a practical bible for all the the uh, the maintenance managers and maintenance engineers definitely something for me also as a strategic manager here in fact um, your your very first slide was talking of uh, right sizing of equipments which is a yeah. perfect thing because i have practical experience where some of the consultants were sizing equipments just for, for for their own safety after conducting a pr audit i could find out i could say close to 20 once again sir which is something i could say close over 20 to 25% of energy just because i've conducted a peer review on modifying these uh, researching the equipments i think everything starts from there as a rightly said and your practical experience of showing certain data and energy saving by modifying simple pulley size on your motor side machine size is extremely extremely practical very nice thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for your insights presentation to us great learning to thank almost every one of us in this particular forum yeah. thank you so much for speaking Thank you, sir. Thank one more you. Thing. I just want to ask you one question from my side. Yeah. You are not touched upon the flexible couplings because I I modified certain uh, blowers and the uh, pumps from the rigid coupling to flexible coupling just by changing couplers. I could save more close to twelve to fifteen percent energy. That part was missing in the presentation. Probably if you can share some ideas on this, good. Definitely, definitely. The in fact, uh, the this type of uh, low jai couplings or the soft couplings or the flexible couplings, sir. Uh, because yeah. people have started changing out to this vfd so this vfd plus this uh, belt and pulley uh, see it's a hybrid combination of vfd and belt and pulley it gives so much of savings uh, so the couplings is are uh, take undertaken by this uh, belt and uh, pulley and the vfd as such thank you sir thank you thank you thank you gunalan sir that was uh, fantastic so with this uh, i would request murugesh sir to give uh, closing comments thank you Ashok sir, as usual, it was a fantastic presentation with a lot of insights and a lot of uh, data as well as very very practical uh, explanation. Thank you very much for your time, and it was fantastic as usual. And I thank all the participants for your participation as well as wonderful support as usual. And thank you, uh, Mr. Sharman, also. Uh, for your uh, moderation thank you thank, thank you, you.